Miss Todd, you are suing your former fiance, Mr. Foster, to prove he fathered your four-month-old daughter, Selena. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, you say he called off the wedding due to paternity doubts. Yes, Your Honor. All right, Mr. Foster, you say Miss Todd admitted that she cheated on you during the window of conception, so the baby's not yours. Yes. So, Mr. Foster, you called off the wedding. Yes. Tell the court why. Me and Miss Todd, we was engaged. The reason why I called it off was because it was one day a friend of hers, she wanted to go hang out. And Miss Todd told me that it was her friend and his girlfriend. So I'm like, okay, I don't got nothing to worry about. When I went to the store, came back, I had a call saying that she was gone already. And that was kind of suspicious. Oh, wait. So you're engaged to her. Yes. And she says, I want to go hang out with a friend of mine. And it's a guy. Yes. But you're, you say, I'm not insecure. So, okay. And then what happened? And then the next day... Miss Todd came back. She came home the next day? Yes. Okay. Okay. So, go ahead. So, I normally don't go through her phone at all, but her phone just kept on buzzing, and it was a test message, and a test message said, it was good. I want some more. <laughs> what? In my mind, I'm thinking, like, you're supposed to be my, be my fiancé, and I'm seeing this. Uh, Miss Todd, is this true? You went out with a friend and stayed out all night? Yes, Your Honor. Oh, so did you sleep with him that night? Yes, Your Honor. Oh. Tell me what happened. Okay, that night, uh, me and my friend went to the store, and then we went back to the, his place where we was at, and then we was drinking and smoking, and then... Where was his girlfriend? She wasn't there, Your Honor. Oh, so that was a lie? Yes, Your Honor. That was a lie from the get-go. Yes, Your Honor. Oh, okay. So, go ahead. So, you go to the store. Um, you go to the store, get something to eat, then we went back to the place, then it just happened. We used protection. It just happened? Yeah, she just... Sound like y'all was planning it to me. No. So, was this the only time you had sex with this gentleman? No, Your Honor. Wow. You my... didn't know that, Mr. Foster? This my... is this my first time ever hearing about... The second time. Well, let me help you get the details. Uh, Miss Todd. Yes, Your Honor. So you had sex with this gentleman again, not just this night, another night as well. Yes. Tell me. He came and got me from the house, and we went back to his place, and it happened again, but we used protection. That's why I felt like Mr. Foster was the father. So wait a minute. You're engaged to Mr. Foster? No, not at the time he wasn't. At the time, you just dating? Yeah, we was, we was boyfriend and girlfriend at the time. We wasn't, he didn't propose to me. He proposed to me on my birthday. That was the time that he... That was after you had already been intimate with yes. this gentleman more than one time. Yes. But you only told Mr. Foster you were intimate with this guy yes. one time. Yes, Your Honor. So why didn't you tell him about the other time? I don't... I'm not sure. Oh. How soon after this did you find out you were pregnant? It was two months. Okay, um, Mr. Foster... You remember the night she told you about being pregnant, right? Yes. And you were excited initially? Yes, I was at first. Did you tell the other guy you were pregnant as well? No, because I, I knew it was, a, it was a possibility that he wasn't the father. So, no, I did not tell the other person. He found out on pictures on Facebook. Did he ever think he was the father? No. Because you know protection is not 100% effective. Yeah. yeah. You know that? Yes. Okay. So, Mr. Foster, I want to understand from you. When you initially found out Miss Todd was pregnant, were you happy or not? Actually, no. I told her that you need to go find your baby daddy because it's not me. So, when she initially told you that, your first reaction was, this is not my child? Yes, because me and Miss Todd have been together for three years. And me and her, we had unprotected sex like two, three times a day for three years. Mrs. Todd have not got pregnant. Because I didn't get pregnant on me that he's not the, the father. And then the other thing which sealed the case was when Mrs. Todd finally had the baby, we had sex again, so... And then he left me when I... at the apartment by myself. He didn't tell me, you know, that he was leaving. He told me through a text message that we was over. It was like, we supposed to be a gay. She should have told me in person. And like, then he went... That's what I gotta understand. You know? I gotta understand this. You say you cheated with this guy more than one time before you were engaged. Yes. So how'd you get to the point where you found out she cheated 
but you still asked her to marry you. No, um, we was already engaged first. She said you weren't. We was. Were you or were you not, Miss Todd, engaged when you had your friend come pick you up? Her birthday is in the summertime, and if I'm not mistaken, it was cold out when a guy came and come no, to, it was, to it come was and get her. No, it was outside when he came. It was warm. So, so, Ron, I ain't never heard this before. They don't know whether or not they were engaged. He, he was engaged. She was not engaged. So you, in your mind, you, you were... you see the wedding cake right there? That's on her birthday. Oh, and there's the ring. August 8th. Yes, that... So now, does that refresh your memory? Yes, Your Honor. Were you engaged when you had this man come pick you up? That yes, was... Your Honor. Okay. Thank you for that proof, Mr. Foster. That's Thank why you bring proof to court. If you want more episodes of Paternity Court, make sure to subscribe and click on the notification bell. So, during your pregnancy, he wasn't involved at all? No. I wanted him to go to see the, um, the ultrasound pictures with me, and I have proof right here that I have... And he didn't want... He didn't want to go. What proof did you bring? Ron, will you please hand me this proof? What is this, Ms. Todd? When I found out what I was having, I wanted him to be there. He wasn't there at all. This is your ultrasound? Yes. And then during this ultrasound, you were alone? Yes, I was alone with a family member, and I wanted him to be there with me. And he just didn't show? No, he didn't come. I had, I had text messages showing that, asking him to come to my ultrasound, my appointments with me, he didn't come to none. At all. Because yeah. in your, your mind, you're thinking, this is the man I was engaged to be married. To. We were having unprotected sex. I did cheat. However, I used protection then, and he should still be there for me. Yes. Let's be honest, Miss Todd. You made a very bad I made, mistake. I know. I, I made a mistake, you know. I meant to do my wrong, you know. I wanted him to be there. I wanted him there for the whole beginning of my pregnancy, the whole time through, like, taking pictures with me. You know, I didn't have no pictures, no memories with him holding my stomach or nothing at all. That's it all is I wanted. Because it. I'm not the father. He is the father. That baby looked just like him. Look at that baby right there. But I'm not the father. You brought a witness. I'd like to hear from her. Ma'am, please stand. So, Ms. Foster, I need to understand you are Mr. Foster's mother. Correct. Why don't you believe your son is not this child's father? Uh, Ms. Todd admitted that the other guy was a father. Oh. I was in Vegas. I received a phone call from my son stating that Mrs. Todd didn't have a place to stay. Once I made it back home, I sat her down at the table and I asked her, you know, was it a chance that my son was the father? She said that this other guy was the Excuse father. Excuse me, Your Honor. I said it was a possibility that, that Mr. Foster or the other guy could be the father. So you told her that there's a possibility yes. that someone else could be the father. Yes, I did, Your But Your you Honor. stated in court today that you said there was no way you thought this other guy could be the father because Because the condom broke, so it could be a possibility. Oh! Yes. You left that part out of your early testimony. Ms. Todd is a liar. Continue, Ms. Foster. Um, as I was saying, I told her that she needs to take a DNA test with this guy. And family members of hers were calling me you know, let me know that this guy was the father. He didn't want to be involved. Hold on. You had her family members calling you to say that this other guy, this friend, was really the father. Correct. But that that guy just didn't want to be involved. Exactly. So what you felt and... like she was... Your son was just the next best case scenario. Exactly. Continue. I had told my son, I said, if you're going to be with her, you might as well marry her and get over the fact that the child may not be yours. And he signed the birth certificate. Mr. He signed Foster, the birth certificate. why did you sign that birth certificate if you're standing in court today saying the entire time you had so much doubt? The reason why was because I was the only guy that was there that had stepped up. So you came to the birth? Yes. You were there? Yes. You participated? Yes. yes. So you... Named her, everything. Really? I yes. drove her to the delivery room. These no. are pictures of you yes. in the yes. hospital. Beautiful. So... At that moment, you just stepped up or did you say, I really think I'm this child's father now? Well, it was like more of I'm a step up and I'm and I'm be a man since Mrs. Todd is staying with us. But you did not believe the child was yours. If he didn't believe the child was here, why would he stop the birth certificate? Did you understand at that time? I wanted her to have my last name. He was so adamant for her 
my daughter to have his last name. Were you adamant about that, Mr. Foster? Well, yeah. Yes, so I was. So let me ask you this. Did you know when you signed that birth certificate that you were acknowledging you were this child's legal father? Yes, I did. So at that point, you just decided to step up and say, I'm going to be this child's... Because, listen, whether or not we determine you are the biological father today, let's be clear. You are the legal father and you're responsible for her. I mean, it is an admirable thing for you to say no other man showed up and this baby wasn't going to have a father, so I'm going to stand up. But if you then come to court to contest the fact that you are the biological father, it begs the question, why sign the birth certificate in the first place? Your Honor. Yes, Ms. Todd? I just feel the baby is his. You know, she looks just like him. Well, you know, feeling don't have nothing to do with it. <laughs> All right. Let me tell you something. Oh, that, uh, I wish it had something to do with right. it. Right. The feeling part is what got you here, but it's not going to be what gets you out of here. The truth is going to get you out of here. I have pictures. Let so... me see the pictures. Ron, hand me this proof. Yes, ma'am. What are these pictures of? Of him and mm. Selena. He was four, I mean, four years old, and she's four months now. And you believe this is baby Selena on the left? Yes. And this is Mr. Foster as a child on the right? Yes. And you believe they look just alike? Yes. Do you see the resemblance, Mr. Foster? I see some, but I don't think that I'm the father. I'm not the father. How about you, Ms. Foster? Not really. So at the point your son signs his birth certificate, that's why you said to him, well, you signed the birth certificate, now you might as well marry her. Yes, because he was advised not to do it. Oh, you told him don't do that? Me and, and a friend of mine, which is an attorney. You had access to legal counsel and still went on and signed a birth certificate for a child? Yes, I did. That you thought was not yours? Yes, I did. You understand that even if today's testimony and the DNA results prove that this is not your biological child, that that does not automatically get you off the hook legally for being responsible for this baby. Do you understand? Yes. Ms. Todd, now, you've, you're in tears. What, what's, what are you feeling? I want to know who her father is. This, you know, it's emotional to me. You know, now, him not stepping up to the plate because that baby looked just like him. But listen, just, what I just know. heard you say, and, and it's okay. Look, this is a sensitive situation. Sometimes there's nothing wrong with a tear. But I just heard you say, I just am ready to know who her father is. Yes. So the truth is, you really don't know. No. Okay. Mr. Foster, I just have to ask you briefly before we get to results. You know, I see you standing there, and I know at certain points it's been hard for you to even testify today, and I see the look in your eyes. You've tried to step up to the plate for this baby, even though people advise you not to. How has this whole situation affected you? It's affected me by a lot. Like, far as, like, by me growing up, not having a father, so that was the only reason why I did what I did. I understand. I knew there was, had to be a good reason. Oh, it's okay, honey. And I did so good by this little girl for three months. It's like... I don't know. And now the doubts are just eating away at you. Yeah. I understand. And now I can see clearer what your intentions were. So even though people were advising you not to do it, you were basing your actions on your own personal life experience yes. of not having a dad. And you didn't want this beautiful little girl to experience what you did. Yes. I understand. I think it's time for the results. Yes, Judge. These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics and they read as follows. In the case of Todd V. Foster, when it comes to four-month-old Selena Foster, it has been determined by this court. Mr. Foster, you are her father. Oh, I right, told baby. you so. I told you you was her father. I told him he was not there. All right. I told you. She looked just she like you. Good. I'm sorry, she did too. She looked just yeah. like you. Yeah, this courtroom exists so that we can clear up confusion and we can move to a place of clarity for the benefit of beautiful, innocent children like Selena. So now there's no doubt 
There's no confusion. You all have to figure out from here on out how to move forward in a positive way, a productive way. Now, Ms. Todd, I know this is gonna be your, your, your soapbox you're gonna stand on and you have got to choose to let it go. You cannot keep pointing at him and telling him, I told you, I called you, you weren't there. You're very blessed. I have seen children in this courtroom that are four years old, 14 years old, 44 years old that don't know who their father is. Your child's very blessed that she will not remember this time. Ms. Boyer and Ms. Fields, you've both brought the defendant, Mr. Sanderford, to court today to prove that he is your biological father, but you each believe that you are his only daughter and the other is not. Am I correct? Yes, Your Honor. All right. Mr. Sanderford, you state you do not believe that either is your daughter, but actually hope that one is and one is not. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. I will start with you, Ms. Fields. Yes. Ms. Boyer, you may have a seat. So, Ms. Fields, start from the beginning. About two years ago, I sent him a message on Facebook asking him if I could borrow some money, and he responded with, maybe I need to find my real dad, that he wasn't even my father. That's not true. I was upset, Your Honor, at that point in time, because she just kept on aggravating me about money, money, and that's, that's the only time I've ever heard from her is when it was money. But you never, you've never done anything for me. With me... What do you mean I've never done anything You've never you? done I anything. I carried you to the park, I carried you to the fairs. When? 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 You all don't I remember, remember all is you staying You were such a small child, all I remember you don't remember is you a lot home. of things. Mr. Sandifer, so you said you had been there for her her whole life? No, ma'am, not her whole life. So you've been there in what capacity? I would say half of it. And you acted as a father. No, he did not. He did not raise me. My I did the best I could my as a father. My grandparents raised me because my All right, mother, so Mr. Sanford, yeah, yeah, they did adopted you, you because they Because under they, I could not be financially false supported. I didn't know nothing about it. Because you're not on my birth certificate. You didn't do anything for me, so why? I my case. I'm not on your birth certificate. Because, but so why? who is your father? I don't, I don't know. I don't know. If you're not, I don't know. But I've been led to believe my whole life that you're my father. You introduced me as your child. Why change now? Why do you have doubts, specifically? For one reason, Your Honor, her, my name's not on her birth certificate. She doesn't have no comparison to me or any of my family. You are my father. You are my father. I don't compare to you because you were never around me. I have doubts, young okay. lady. All right, tell me about your childhood, Miss Fields. Growing up, I was, um, him and my mother were, like, were married from the time I was four to about the time I was nine. This hurts you. It's okay. I was adopted take to my grandparents time. because my mother couldn't afford, she couldn't afford to take care of three children by herself. My grandparents stepped no, that, in that, to that's help a lie me. Right there. Let her finish. She, couldn't, she was working at a bar in a burger place. She could not afford it. Three children by herself? You didn't help. Why they should I help when I wasn't the father? I mean, How I, I did you right. know that you weren't the father? Why not get a that's DNA why test here. then? That, that's why why not here. do it then if you, you had to help? You force it on me. Why then? not do it? How old was I? Forced. You're the adult. I'm the child. How am I supposed to do this? You're the adult. Why didn't you ask? Act, why didn't you like ask? It. Why don't you ask? Miss Fields, continue on, please. I'm listening. My grandparents, they adopted me. They did everything they could for me. They took care of me. They... They did more than what they were supposed to do. Yeah, and they pushed there. me out of the picture. That's because why. Because you I were never to... in the picture. How could they pu push you out of the picture when you were never there to begin Samantha. with? Then why do you call other men dads all the time? Your mother's was married with... right now. Because and I you're call calling him, him I called him dad because he raised me from the time Bull I was hockey, 13. Girl. That, no, he, he didn't. Took, raise he bought you. my senior. Then picture. why do you always come to me for money and not them? If he's I your go dad. to them. I go to them, but you're my but, father. But you're you supposed always say that he come down. You are supposed to do for me. Me before they Introduce will. me as your child, then I That's should right. get you what know, I need. I should get what I, I was told. You didn't do anything. Find out that you're not. Family, ladies, gentlemen, let's settle down a little bit because I do want to understand this, Ms. Fields. Your childhood. When I was 13 years old, January, my grandmother passed away, and right after that, I lost my grandfather. On my grandfather's deathbed, he specifically asked my dad if he would take care of, take care of his girls, stating me and my mom. He said yes. If he wasn't my father, so why would he? your mother found another man in her life, so why? And he took to care of me, so what is he that? Has, okay, he's took right. care of me. Okay, so Mr. Sandifer, did you date her mother? Did you have an intimate relationship they with were her mother? Married. Yes, Your Honor. Then she come up pregnant, and I was always told by friends that Samantha was my child, 
but you when the baby was too. born, I was there. Now, wait, this is what I'm trying to understand. You said you were at the hospital, and were you there because you thought you were about to have a baby with her mother? I was there for a friend. You weren't yes. even at the hospital? Oh, as a friend? Oh, no, yes, I was, and your mother had some other guy that she was dating at that time, but he was there, and he said, oh, I got me a new daughter, I got me a new daughter. I don't remember this, I don't remember well, this. Of course you did, no, you wait, was a wait. baby. <laughs> Yeah, you wouldn't remember that, right. Ms. No. Right. Mr. Sandifer, yeah, there's Washington. another guy there. Y yes, Your Honor, there was. And he was saying, I have another daughter, I have another daughter. Yes, Your Honor. Speaking about Miss Fields. Yes, Your Honor. My so, mother was good to you. So you then stayed out in the So then why were you there as a friend instead of as a potential or because new I've father? A, no, if I was the father, because she slept with so many different men. So, she slept with different men? She slept, you were the one that stayed in the bar looking for women, every woman. So you what? Every and your mother was one of them. She, she worked at a bar. She had two jobs to support well, me and my sister. she hung out there afterward, too. Okay, just because she hung out, does that mean she's sleeping with other people? You hang out at the bar, are you sleeping Ms. with everybody Fields? in the bar? Uh, if I get the chance. <laughs> He told the truth. I guess he told that. He's the womanizer. Oh, uh, Miss Fields. All your life you were told that Mr. Sandifer was your father. Yes, Your Honor. Your biological father. Yes, Your Honor. And were you ever told that it could be someone else? Never. Never. Not until I was 23 years old and he told me that on a Facebook message. Tell me about your relationship with Ms. Boyer. We don't have a relationship. We, we don't have a relationship like sisters should. Y'all hey, have a lot better relationship than me and you do. Of course, because I fought custody for her and everything. And you would have never done that if it wasn't for sure. How she could I when you was adopted out you from never... under me, Samantha? You weren't there before I was adopted out from under you. When I was nine years old, you could have done something. What did you want me to do? Do, act like a father? I, I was do what there you had for to do you. To get there was no of other man in your life what, to be your father. Do what you had to do to be I took the responsibility okay, you didn't man take res up. Responsibility of man up when? When you were at the bar drinking? I want to hear from Ms. Boyer. Please stand up, ma'am. Ms. Fields, you may take a seat. Thank you for your testimony. You're Ms. Boyer, yes, explain to the court why you're here today exactly. I am here today to prove that Mr. Sandifer is my father. Um, I have proof otherwise, Your Honor. You have proof that she is not your daughter. My name's not on the birth certificate. I'd like to see that. Jerome, please hand me that evidence. But Your Honor, he was in a relationship with my mother when I was born, and he lived with us till I was five years old. This is a copy of Ms. Boyer's birth certificate? The reason there is another man on my birth certificate, Your Honor, is because my mother was married and separated. And told me I was the father. But because she was still married back 30 years ago, you had to put your husband on the birth certificate. Mr. Sandifer, you were there when Tuesday was born? Yes, Ms. Your Boyer? Honor. Were you there again as a friend or were you no, there I because there you there thought you father. were the father? I raised her for eight years to me and her mother separated. I paid child support religiously. Then this child would call me up and tell me there's no food in the house, mama's gone, we don't know where she's at, bring me some money or some food. I call my lawyer, your honor, she says, next visitation, Mr. Sandifer, pick your daughter up and don't take her back. I said, well, I'll liable to go to jail. She said, don't worry about that, I'll get you out. So we went to court, the judge gave her mother three opportunities to show up. She never showed up to court, to never the court date. Never showed up. And you were awarded full? Yes, your honor. After that entire legal battle, did you believe Ms. Boyer was your biological child? Not really, your honor, because I still have doubts just because of the paperwork. If you're not my dad, why did you fight for me? Because I, mean, I love we... you and I manned up. Why did I you went... leave me I when I already had custody and go back to your mother? That's what I don't understand. I didn't go to my mother. You did. I went to. I you went, went to, to Atlanta, my brother, to Georgia. When I went to visit him, though, when, when he brought me back, I was 14 years old. Right. We pulled up to the house, and the house was abandoned. There was no one there. Everything was gone. You had moved to California. I found that out by going to the, no, no, my no, grandmother's no, no. house. That, that's wrong. So that's I wrong. went back to Georgia I with my pick brother. Your butt up. Tuesday? Yes, that was after I had been there for almost two years. Yeah, well, uh, you decided you thought things were better on the other side living with her. So I didn't want to move Boyer, to California. 
ultimately, do you believe he abandoned you? Yes, Your Honor. I, I have do. never abandoned you. Just tell me how you feel. Your Honor. What do you feel? When I was 10, um, he got a divorce and I was left you with quit my grandmother. You quit school on me? I quit school because I had no one to sign me up for school because you wouldn't sign over rights so someone could sign me Why up for I school. Why should I sign over my rights? Well, how could I go to school if no one could register me? But Your Honor, when he had a woman that had children, I was in his life. When there was a woman without children, I was left at my grandmother's. You're an adult now, Tuesday. Yes, but I have three kids that need you. Uh, they don't have oh, another boy, grandparent you in their know life. I'm there at least twice a week. At yes, least. but you don't do things with them like you used to. I work. I'm so tired, I barely have time for myself. I spend as much time as I can. You can't say that yes, I don't. But there are we other grandparents. We just went to Huntsville just last summer. Right, and they enjoyed that. But Carried their other the grandparents have passed away and they have no one else. They need you in their life. I need you in my life. Well, I believe you are my dad, and that's why I want to prove it. I mean, the difference between me and Samantha, okay, is I'm five foot one. She's five ten. I look like him. She doesn't. And I mean, there's a picture of me and him as a when I was a child. That was right after he got custody of me. That's such a cute picture. Thank you, Your Honor. May not have been the best dad in the world, but I tried my darndest. I worked my butt off so hard and tried to do things for y'all when I can and when I can afford it. I don't have an education. So pretty much, Ms. Boyer, you blame him. Yes, Your Honor. Because you feel like this relationship or lack of relationship caused you to drop out of school. Yes, Your Honor. What's the last grade you completed? Seventh grade. So you're suing him for the cost of a GED program because you believe he owes that to you. Something yes, already Honor. paid for? That way I can help my kids with their homework. So you believe he owes you another GED test because the last time he paid for it, you were so distressed because of your relationship, you were not able to effectively study and pass. And that's why you're suing him yes, today Honor. for that. Yes. Okay. I think I'm ready for the results. Jerome? Ms. Boyer, I will start with you. These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics and they read as follows. In the case of Fields Boyer v. Sandifer, when it comes to 31-year-old Tuesday Boyer, it has been determined by this court, Mr. Sandifer, you are not her father. Oh, wow. You okay, sir? You need to take a seat? Yeah, I'm fine, I'm fine. I, I was sure he was my father. God almighty. Sorry, Your Honor. <clears throat> my, my kids need a grandparent, so I've got to find. You got one. You got a father still. You still got a father. I would love for you to be in their life. <laughs> Mr. Sandifer, did you really want to be Ms. Boyer's father? Yes, Your Honor. I'm so sorry. Are you ready for the next result with Ms. Field? I got you. Yes, Your Honor. These results were also prepared by DNA Diagnostics and they read as follows. In the case of Fields Boyer v. Sandifer, when it comes to 25-year-old Samantha Fields, the court has determined In the case of Fields Boyer v. Sandifer, the court has determined, Mr. Sandifer, you are not her father. Oh my. <sighs> 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 
I presume Samantha wasn't, but I never thought Tuesday would have. I'm still here for you girls. Anytime. And your children's too. I'm still their grandfather. Ms. Boyer, the basis of your suit was that your father, the man that raised you, uh, was responsible for providing you with an education. And unfortunately, I cannot award you any money for an additional test because there have been no facts presented that he was at all negligent. Your claim is denied. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Sandifer, you have indicated you will still be here for the girls and their children, and I think that's commendable. Yes, Your Honor. And ladies, take advantage of Mr. Sandifer's offer. Do the work and just help move forward. I think your dad could use a hug. I'm sorry, girls. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Not the results that I expected at all. I know. Your mom has got some explaining to do. Yeah, a lot. Oh, man. I wish you every, every blessing and good luck. Mr. Gray, you are suing your wife and the mother of your daughter for a paternity test. You and your parents claim Mrs. Gray lied to you about her sexual past, and since discovering the truth about her, you now all fear the baby is not your biological daughter. Yes, Your Honor. Mrs. Gray, you argue that your husband is destroying your marriage because he no longer trusts you. You claim that your in-law's influence is causing your husband to deny his child. You also say your husband has not stepped up financially in the past. Yes, Your Honor. Mrs. Gray, what was your first impression of your daughter-in-law? Well, considering the fact that the first time that she came to our home, uh, that particular day, she and Tanner went to the bedroom and had unprotected sex. Ooh. Okay. Uh, uh, how old were they when... She was 14 and he was 15 uh. years old. Okay. Okay, Let me so... get my mouth off the ground. Okay. They went to his bedroom... Yes, ma'am. ...and had sex. Yes, ma'am. Okay, continue. Okay, within about three weeks, they called me into the bedroom. She explained to me that she was late on her period. I looked around for a few things to throw, and instead I went to the store and I got a pregnancy test, and I come back, tossed it at her, asked her if she knew how to use it, considering she was only 14 years old. And uh, she said yes. She went to the bathroom, brought it back to me, and it was positive. Okay. You know what I want? I want to hear a little bit about your son before I move on to you, Mr. Gray. What was he like okay. before? Tanner was enrolled in school. He'd always been involved in sports, mm -hmm. basketball, a uh, popular child. He always made very good decisions. He had had a relationship before. Uh, mm -hmm. I had furnished him with a condom in case he ever wanted to have sex. So you had had a discussion with him about absolutely, responsibility? Absolutely, positively. He had a complete goal. He was going to be a police officer, and everything changed. Now, Mr. Gray, I want to bring you in here because I want to find out from you how this relationship started with Ms. Gray. Yes, Your Honor. Caitlin and I, we met through Facebook. We went out on a first date to a basketball game. Uh, about a week later, we had our second date and she came to my mother's house. Uh, she stayed for a couple days and... Oh, the second date lasts a couple days? Yes, yes, yes ma'am. Wow! At, at 15 and 14 years old, two-day dates? Never heard of such. Okay. Yes, and they were supposed to be sleeping by the Christmas tree. Well, that didn't go over so well. Oh! Okay. So... And considering the fact of, of her family's background and considering the fact of what Tanner has told me about her previous uh, boyfriends and girlfriends, I'm not sure that the baby could be his because I felt like, you know, he was the pick of the litter. Well, let me ask Mr. Gray. I mean, you're a handsome young man, and definitely I can see how any mom thinks their son is the pick of the litter. I see that. But I want to know from you, when you met Mrs. Gray, you obviously were interested in her. You took her on date. Yes, ma'am. You had a two-day second date. 
When you found out that she was pregnant, did you feel like this could possibly be my child? No, I didn't, because I, when, when she was 14 years old that, and I was 15, we decided to have sex, and I figured if she was going to have sex with me on her second date at my house at such a young age, why wouldn't she have sex with somebody else? I knew for a fact that I had details on reasons why the baby couldn't be mine, and... Specifically why? How about when her family tried to explain to you that if the baby comes out black, that it's oh. still yours. Oh. Okay? And they had him convinced That's of this. That's an interesting fact even for the court. Yes. Yes. Okay. I'm like, it took me and my oldest daughter two days to convince him that that was not the truth. That's math that just doesn't add up, right? I, I, I think so. Uh, well, considering the fact that I'm we gonna had agreed... I'm going to in just one second, Ms. Gray. Just one second. I just want Mr. Gray to finish this thought that I'm going to give you a chance to answer that. What did she ask? you to do on your very first sexual she told, experience. She told me that she wanted to have a baby with me. Okay, now this that is the moment that I want to hear from you, Ms. Gray. Is that true? Did you say on that date, that second long date <laughs> at 14 and 15, I'm still not over that, that you wanted to have a baby? Yes, Your Honor, but he also agreed to because obviously I turned up pregnant. So if he didn't oh. agree to it, then I mean... So you all are 14 he agreed. and 15 years old, two babies making a decision that y'all gonna have a baby. Yeah. Why is it that you, not only are you engaging in adult activity, but you're talking about becoming parents? Why? Because you all feel like you hit it off so much? What's the reason for this? I'm not understanding this. Because she well, had your a Honor, terrible home life. Horrible home life. She needed out of that. I want to hear from you, Ms. Gray. Well, Your Honor, um, considering the fact that during the heat of the moment, I had said something about, you know, getting pregnant, and Tanner, uh, you know, he seemed like that he was agreeing with me, and during the heat of the moment, he got me pregnant. So, I mean... So it really wasn't a good decision. It was a mutual agreement. A mutual agreement based upon irresponsibility <laughs> and bad decision-making. <laughs> was it a mutual agreement, Mr. Gray? Your Honor, during, during the moment, it, it was a mutual agreement, yes, but... About doubt, you know, I had gotten and broken into her email accounts and two to four weeks prior to our first date, actually, she had sexual conversations with numerous guys. And I had proof of that. Uh, I had sat her down and I told her all about that. And uh, she, first she denied it. Uh, I would got into the email again to show her what I had found. And uh, the information was not there. I had a family member that was actually a computer engineer. Mm -hmm. And he helped me get all of those emails back. She started crying and bawling, and uh, she admitted to it. She actually admitted to sleeping with six other people than me. Oh! You discovered emails with six other guys? She admitted to me sleeping with six other guys. How many other men the, did you see on the email? The emails, there was quite a bit that she was just having sexual conversations with two to four uh, weeks prior. Sexual with, conversations? Yes, about having sex with each other. Oh! oh. And then when I demanded a DNA test, I demanded it. I set him down. I'm his mother. I had that right. He was underage. Okay? His, her and her family did everything in the world to convince him that it would make him a bad person if he did not trust her enough to have that DNA test. So he did not have that DNA test against my wishes. Your Honor, I mean, there's no question denying these pictures. They look just alike. They both have big ears. I mean... I don't Your have Honor, big ears I would at like all. To say that, and that picture of, of Tanner right there looks like identical to my four-year-old who has a different father. So, when you look at this picture, do you see a resemblance, Mr. Gray? <clears throat> a little bit, but I still have that doubt. You have that doubt. I do have that doubt. We because you said at some point after you confronted her about these emails, she looks at you and tells you, "Yeah, I slept with six other people." Yes, ma'am. Is this true, Ms. Gray? Yes, Your Honor, it is. But also, She's considering the fact... My son. my son was the best one out of the ones in which she slept with. Oh. Well, considering the fact we had a beautiful, nice six-bedroom home, and she seen that, and she took advantage of that. So, in your opinion, she came over on that second date, and that Christmas tree was sparkling. Absolutely. Right? And the six bedrooms. Those big presents Look, are glistening. Throw pillows and like, on the, the bed. Place. And she got in her mind, I'm going to make this long term. Yes, That's your account? Yes, Your Honor. 
Did you feel that, Mr. Gray? Yes, ma'am. The same exact one. Now, you have a witness. Your stepfather's here. Please, please step up to the podium, yes, sir. Yes, Your Honor. State uh, your name. Uh, Chris Boyd, Jacqueline's husband. Thank you, Mr. Boyd. Yes, I found out recently that she had made a statement to, to my family members that she was pregnant when she met Tanner. Ooh. You know, he was four, 15 at the time. Well, you Your know, Honor, Your Honor, like I said before, it wasn't just me. It takes two. But, it takes two. But, Your Honor, at 14 years well, old. It usually takes two that are in a monogamous relationship. It doesn't take one that's sleeping with six people versus one on one. Your Honor, they're, they're together. He's doing everything he can to support him, support him, his, his wife, and his baby. And then he calls me on the phone and says, I just got done smashing Caitlin's phone. I said, really? Why? He goes, I caught her talking to other guys again. I said, really? He goes, yep. 30 minutes later, 30 minutes, he calls me back up. He says, I'm going to be the glue that holds this family together. I said, what do you mean? I said, is she still giving you sex or what? I said, I can't believe that, that she, you've changed your mind within 30 minutes. One minute you're ready to walk out, next minute, you, you know, and I'm trying to make heads or tails of what's going on. She has a negative force that brings him down to her family's level. And, you know, he was raised on a different level than her family was, you know, like... Level. Like, yeah. I don't like, 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 like school, down, college, morals. He had, he had... You so know, you're accusing goals. her of not having a family that... Oh, has I'm not morals. accusing it, that is a fact. So, Ms. Gray, I have to ask you, you can understand, can't you, why Mr. Gray may have doubt about your child considering you admitted to sleeping with six other young men. Uh... Yes, Your Honor. Yes. Okay. I want to hear from your witness, Ms. Gray. Okay. You have your grandmother, yes, Ms. Wolhart, here yes. by Skype. Yes. Okay. Can we please have Ms. Wolhart? Good morning. Good morning. How are you, ma'am? I'm good. How are you? Wonderful. Thank you for joining us today. I'd like to ask you, what is it about this situation that is upsetting you so much that you are agreeing to be here by Skype? Your Honor, I'm upset that when they were broke up for three months, I'm the one that bought the diapers and the food and the... I supported that well, child for three years. I bought her school supplies, school clothes, drove her back and forth to college, well, bought you know her food, what? bought That's her tampons. Okay, let's hear from and everything. I don't know. know. She could have come and live with somebody, and you told her father at the hospital that you were going to let her live in your house. She had to live somewhere. Okay, I want to understand from you specifically. Now, it seems like you are upset with Mr. Gray's mother. What is it specifically that you feel like she's done or has not done? Well, another thing, being teenagers, they would have never left the living room, for one, if I was at home. <laughs> that was the I'll tell you what, I might be old school, Ms. Gray, but I have to say I cannot agree more with Ms. Wolhart. I was not allowed. He had been in a bedroom before, and that didn't ever happen before well, because he had a car. But my that point been, is this. Maybe that girl it didn't takes want to have sex. Two but... people to do this tango they've done. Yes, it does. And therefore, although you continually say that Ms. Gray is the culprit, she's the one to blame, she's the manipulative one, no, she's, she's the, one the one that had the multiple affairs out or, of the or litter of men, your son went on right on down the alley and jumped on. All right. Thank you, Ms. Walhart. You're welcome. Okay. You all end up getting married. Yes, we did. You're married now. Yep. Yes, ma'am. Now, this is interesting to me because you all have barely looked at one another. This entire time you've presented your stories to the court. This situation has really destroyed not just your marriage, but your relationships with each other's families as well. Am oh, I most correct? Most definitely. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. Which I would have never had a family relationship with her family anyway. I've never... So the results of this test, this DNA test, is going to determine the future of your families. I see you becoming very emotional, <laughs> Ms. Gray. Tell me what you feel. 
I'm listening. <laughs> I just know for a fact that Keely is Tanner's. <laughs> And he could be any other person. And I know that for a fact. Because if I had been pregnant for six months, I would have known. I would have known that I was pregnant. But I don't want this whole subject to destroy our family. I want to stay with Tanner. I want Keely to be with both her mom and father. And I want to have a relationship with my mother-in-law. I want my family to get along with Tanner. And I don't want this whole thing to just, you know, be a big issue and cause us to, you know, get a divorce or anything. And I, I love Caitlin, and I love Keely, and I pray to God that Keely is Tanner's. I pray to God so that So you do want? I, I pray to God that that little, yes, I, I have done everything in the world for her and her. Everything, financially but and Now, everything. you're not just saying you want the child to be your son's because you put out so much money and time. I love You her. love. I love Keely. I love Keely. What's not to love? Exactly. Absolutely exactly. beautiful. She's, she's precious. But I've had to hold my reserve with Keely because I have to know the truth out of all this stuff that's been going on. I want to know the truth. So you feel like as a grandmother, you kind yes. of been holding back. You yes. love her? Yes, I've had you to provide hold back. For her? I love her more than any, anything in the world. I, I, I love her to death. And Mr. Gray, tell the court, what do you want from this situation? I, I want the baby to be mine. I love Keely with all my heart. I've supported her since the day she was born, and I believe, rather or not she is mine or not, that Caitlin best know that I'm still the father, regardless of being situation. All right, I think I've heard enough from everyone. Uh, it's time for the results. Jerome, do you have the envelope? I do, Your Honor. Here you go. Thank you. You're welcome. Mr. Gray. I have the results in my hand. I know each of you are very interested to find out who, in fact, Keely Gray's father truly is. We thank our friends at DNA Diagnostics for the preparation of these results. In the case of Gray versus Gray, when it comes to Keeley, Mr. Gray, you are her father. I love you guys so much. Now that's what I want to see. That is a wonderful example of what the blessing of a beautiful, innocent child can do for a family. But I want to caution you both. You all started down the path to adulthood way too early. Let's be very honest. 14 and 15 years old, hemmed up in bedrooms with closed doors by yourself, I don't see that. That is not appropriate. Now that you are here and you've gotten married because you tried to do the right thing, I will give you that, and I commend you for that. You have to understand that you've brought a child into the world, you are husband and wife, and you are parents. Are we clear? Yes, Your Honor. Make the best life for your child. Well, congratulations to all of you, I will say, and I wish you the best of luck. Court is adjourned.